Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah, he's a friend of Gangsta Reese, uh, San Jose Crip, who we've had on the show in the past. And um, for over 25 years, he's been a gang outreach worker trying to help youth get out of gangs. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the Norteños and the upstate Sorenos. Uh, this guy has great knowledge of the gang culture in San Jose and the Bay Area. Ladies and gentlemen, my boy Joker. What up, man? What's up? Yes, sir. Up? Yeah, yeah. Appreciate you joining the show, man. So, um, shit, I want to know a little bit you know, about you before we, we kind of jump into some history. Um, where exactly did you grow up? Well, of course, you know, I'm from San Jose, California. It's a South Bay. That's, what, that's how we, we're all from Bay Area, but we're kind of identified as a South Bay uh, area. Kind of how Gangster Reese explained it. Uh, we're like, we're not near the water too much, like, <laughs> like Oakland and San Francisco is. We're pretty much uh, the South of uh, San Francisco and Oakland. Um, and grew up pretty much in, in the South San Jose, in the Seven Trees area. It's uh, pretty much uh, in Seven Trees area. In South San Jose is not all hood, but uh, where I grew up at, uh, uh, Seven Trees and, and round, table, uh, round Table area, along with a few other spots in South San Jose, are pretty much uh, uh, ghetto. <laughs> you can say it's pretty, pretty, pretty ghetto. And I still live here. I still live in, in Seven Trees. I live here, you know, I ain't going nowhere, pretty much, you know, this is where I feel comfortable, and I feel at home, I feel at peace, you know, so I'm still here, still here in Seven Trees. Okay, okay. And pretty much, you know, I, I did my gang thing growing up, grew up in gangs pretty much uh, all my life. Um, my brother was a older, uh, older homeboy, he was from the east side, though, but, you know, he did his thing, kind of influenced me with my, with my older uh, god brothers, and cousins and stuff and I just kind of followed in the footsteps but you know as I went along I had like the time I was 19 I had four kids and Ooh. Whoa. going yeah going <laughs> uh, going you know doing the process of going in and out of jail and and uh you know I had uh individuals out here at that time kind of doing the outreach thing and kind of you know I didn't want to uh, leave my kids behind and so you grew up in San Jose. How old were you when you when you joined the gang? I was uh I was actually in three different three different gangs. Oh no shit. <laughs> so so okay. I, I think I was thirteen when I joined my first one. I was kind of just like a a, scat, a scattered gang. I would say like it was a hood. I joined because a, a kid I went to school with in middle school he recruited me. So it was pretty much kids from all over San Jose. We all kicked it downtown. You know I wasn't really from nobody from my neighborhood. Or the kids we went to school with, and then that one kind of uh, fell apart. But we, you know, it was kind of like, you know, we were doing our thing, but pretty much middle school kids, early high school kids, there's a few older guys. And then uh, then uh, after that fell apart, it kind of just, because I went to like three different middle schools. I went to a bunch of different schools. I was bouncing around from school to school. And so when I finally settled down with schools in this area, because my mom didn't want me to go to school over here. And so... When I found out set of school over here, I started getting more connected with everyone from around the neighborhood. And they settled down over here and we kind of, uh, there's a little hood over here that we started. Then it kind of fell off. Then I kind of started my own hood with my, with some of the other guys and it just kicked off from there. And that was the, the last hood I was from. Okay. It's Would still you... around, it's still around, but, but I have nothing to do with it anymore. Oh, okay. Do you want to share with us what the name of the hood is? Uh, not really. That's cool. No, don't even worry about it. It's all good. Not really. Not yeah, yeah. Really, it's, it's all gravy. It's still, it's still around in Seven Trees area. It's a, it's a northern hood. And, and, and the south side of San Jose, there's no uh, there's no Sureno gangs in, in the south side. It's all northern gangs, but they all, you know, northern, it's, it's, it's hood stuff. You know, all northerners don't get along. It's still hood stuff. Okay. And so they, they be shed tripping still and stuff. Even though they're off from the area, they still, like the Seven Trees area, that's probably like, Seven, eight different gangs in this in this uh, in this little they all most of them don't get along, so it's still kind of you know mm. get down.
I know a girl that pops a perk before she brushes her teeth I know a dude that snorts coke at least twice a week I have a friend who's married but he still be fucking bitches And his excuse is that his wife is always fucking bitching I remember, hold up, sorry I forgot to mention I know a girl that used to cut herself to get attention To get attention, I would always used to get detention Getting suspended was my only life's mission My little cousin went to jail, now he's facing life Promised my aunt I'll look after him, but I lied Working 60 hours a week trying to stack cheese Ignoring texts from my family members every week I'm a deadbeat cousin missing birthdays Promised my dad that I'd call him on Thursday But it's Saturday and I haven't hit him yet I know one day that is something that I will get Take your time and focus Sip your potion, oh slow motion Slow down. Take your time and focus. Sip the potion. Oh, slow motion. Yo, yo, yo. I write rhymes for the masses. Introductory classes. Bringing you up to speed. Can't see. Go get your glasses. We gon' mix it with the little honey jack. Got the cherries at the bottom. You know I be eating that. So much going on in the world today. I think we need to slow down, chill, meditate. Let me fly in the sky like birds. I'm using my imagination to strip them with the words. So let's blow clouds. I'm sending you much love. I'm held down by gravity. My spirit is up above. Hop in the sky, take a ride with me. 485 horsepower hit me. Now we gone in the wind, dipping off in the sunset. Moving at the speed of light, car looking like a jet. I bet it was another who wanted to shine, but I'm two steps beyond, baby. This my time. It's my down. Take your time and focus. Sip the potion. Oh, slow motion. Slow down. Take your time and focus. Sip the potion. Oh, slow motion. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane Now it's just them chemtrails trying to take us out, man Population control, so the devil your soul For the money and the power, yeah, the ultimate goal Let that sink in, smoking on some clone guy I feel like I'm sinking in a pool full of liquor Incoherent, sober up, then I do it again Determination of a tortoise with the speed of a hare I'm blowing past some seas like I blow my smoke in the air I play that skin to witness if I was on double bear And I'm always welcome back like my name was Mr. Cartier, bro Rubber, like I burn my leaf Hard for me to slow down when my kids gotta eat I'm in the belly of the beast maneuver like Jet Li Translation man, I'm quick on my feet Quick to defeat, that's my suspicio Or get hit with this heat What? What did he say? Can you repeat? That's my suspicio Or get hit with this heat Slow down Take your time and focus Sip the potion, oh slow motion Slow down Take your time and focus Sip the potion, oh slow motion Do you know why there's no presence of Norteños down there But there is a presence of Sureños up in Northern California? That's well... There's there's a that's a big a big thing over here. So and there's a lot of history uh, with that because for me with the work I do, I've been working with kids for over 25 years, and so I actually have a there's a lot of history with with uh, LA guys and gangs coming up here in the 70s and 80s, but back then there was no such thing as like north and south on the streets. It was only in prison. It started in prison, I think, even then. And so but back then you had uh, guys from Lomas over here. They started up Lomas, Vicky's Town, and I think a few other hoods. Because my brother used to talk to me about a lot of a lot of the gang that, uh, from L.A. that came over here, and there was no problem. Even my, uh, my nephew, I have a nephew. His dad's from L.A. He was from a hood over there. What was it called? Garmelis. He was from Norwalk. He was from Norwalk, okay. and there was no problem. Like, usually when Sureños go to county jail over here, they'll PC up, right? They'll PC up. But my brother said, my, my our former brother-in-law, my nephew's dad, was the only guy who can go to the county jail here and not PC up. Hmm. Because when he moved over here, he was in middle school. But all his older brothers, they were all sleeved down. You know, they were all straight dudes from L.A., 
but they got along with everybody over here. There was no such thing as North and South. They even started a Vicky's Town. It's even on YouTube. Mm-hmm. They even started a Vicky's Town over here in the 70s where there's a Vicky's Town chapter over here. But there was no such thing as them being Sureños or North Day. It was Vicky's Town. And then I guess when food started going to YA in prison, then they started bringing out that North and South with them, saying these fools are the enemies. And st- you know, they started creating that that culture when they started coming out of prison in YA. And so I, all of a sudden, fools from L.A., the hoods from L.A., they kind of faded off. Vicky's Town faded off. Lomas faded off. And I think there was one other hood that faded off that uh, that, that dudes from L.A. started. So they kind of like, they don't exist here no more. Hmm. But pretty much from there, it's just kind of like a, it kicked off with the culture. Uh, it really changed with the with the north and south over here, especially with the uh, uh, with the Mexicanos, because the uh, the Mexicanos when I mean Mexicanos the paisas mm. like uh, are the ones who kind of picked up the uh, the title of being Sureños, and they're the ones who kind of uh, the ones who are identified by the youngsters. Or even I want to identify. I could call them being victimized as being Sureños because uh, the youngsters and me being one of them, not being totally educated, is connecting with Mexico being down south. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the Mexicanos were identified as being Sureños because they were from Mexico. And Mexico, of course, was you know down south, and they were pretty much a uh, picked on and bullied because they were different and they were from considered down south back then. Yeah. So explain to my audience, I know what it is, but explain to my audience what a paisa is. A paisa is pretty much someone who's from Mexico. They're mm-hmm. born in Mexico. When it comes to, you know, the whole gang culture, obviously. Yeah. I know what a paisa well, is, but yeah. Yeah. Well, pretty much a paisa is someone who's identified this for me from Mexico. Mm. Chicanos, Mexican-Americans will identify someone who's born in Mexico who comes over here, but they've been over here for a long time. You know, they're pretty much culturalized with the American culture. Just call them paisas. You know, that term, it's not a negative term. They even call them South paisas. It's just how they're identified. Like we're Mexican American or Chicanos. And they, you know, you know they're just they're identified as being paisas because they're from Mexico or, you know, that's how they identify themselves or Mexicanos, you know, you know they're, they're Mexicanos or paisas. But it's not a it's not a put down or or, or a way to look at them and, as a, them being negative. This is a term how they to identify each other. Mm, gotcha. you know, they even call themselves that in prison or those are the paisas or the border brothers or whatever. Oh, that's my washer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! I was like, I don't know you, if you sh- heard that or not? I'm oh, in, yeah. I'm in my I thought garage. it was the purge. <laughs> I thought you were shaving your head, dog. I'm like, you get me. <laughs> I'm in my garage. I'm like, oh, okay. shit, my fucking. fucking <laughs> That's garage. all good, homie. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, my dude's locked up, huh? <laughs> I hope not. She hasn't been locked up in over 25 years now. Nice. trying to go back. Fuck Man, that. dude. Told her I loved her. Lost in the sound, brains are lost in the cloud, dead from all of the smoke. That's the reason why the ostrich hides his head in the ground. That's the reason why the monster even puts on a mask. And we turn the city green to blend in with the grass. The city scene made a crash. I fell in love with it twice. Had to tell her goodbye because she fell in love with the night. I couldn't keep up, I tried to bring it down from the sky. But the clouds were so nice that she took a nap for a while. And when she woke up, I finally had a kid and a lady. Bone told me he saw it the other day with the baby. Ain't life crazy, I think about it once in a while when it's cloudy outside and the sun goes none of these drugs do what they supposed to yeah and what's the point of hurting people that you're close to yeah 
Most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know <laughs> Yeah Spinning out a cylinder, moving, I'm in reverse Committing crimes of passion, judging jury at first But I love that girl, been my woman since day one Had a couple of kids in the house, the job done So what happened while we ain't loving no more? Maybe I should take some blame instead of taking the score But me and more don't go, I'm begging you gotta change We can work it out even through pleasure and pain You gotta chill with the liquor, girl, you get too friendly Who you talking to, baby? That's my man Henry That's what I'm talking about, baby, just sit your ass down you wanted to have some fun, me take you out on the town So you can shake a tail feather, maybe we cut a rug Drinking and driving on the low key, rum in a jug Give me a hug, grown nigga, baby You drive your nigga crazy in the morning Won't remember shit, I know it's kinda hazy None of these drugs do what they supposed to Yeah And what's the point of hurting people that you're close to Yeah most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah Ready, ready, set, set go. go Put your seatbelt on, up and away we bout to go we bout The to road go. is gon' get windy, promise not to lose control yeah. The final destination's bound to captivate your soul And so, so many MCs inspired to be yeah. One of the baddest motherfuckers to touch the MIC yeah. Then the law came life, now your dreams deferred All the years of writing rhymes captured in a blur My ponders contemplating the worst Put all your energy into the music, now you're looking for thirst to be quenched That's a bitch. Paying dues upon dues Keep on telling yourself I'ma make it Others believe in you too When it's true You can make it if you try There's levels to everything Better believe it Cause you can deny it And never achieve it It won't come easy Just put in the work And know your worth Continue to rise Cause all we do is capitalize None of these drugs Do what they supposed to Yeah And what's the point Of hurting people That you're close to Yeah most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah Where is the dividing line to where, okay, this is where the north starts This is where the south ends, you know is there a city? Is there a, you know a, a line in the sand where you know once you cross this, you're officially in Norteño hood? I was always told it was Bakersfield. I heard Bakersfield was the the border, but I heard Bakersfield like 99 percent Sureño. And so, I mean, I've never been to Bakersfield, but that's always kind of been the uh, the border. Like the, we were told the border, then you know, it can go either way because there's Sureños throughout Northern California now. Hmm. But but all the Sureños from Northern California are from Northern California. They're not from Southern California. They're all, they're all from Northern California. Mm. But the very few, very few, like I've like throughout my years of, with my job, I met Sureños from LA who moved over here. I even have some good friends. I mean, we become good friends. They're from uh, 18th street that they moved over here years ago, you know, you know, you have families that move up here to get away from over there, but then they get caught up over here. You know, with the kids getting involved and in, getting caught up with the gangs and stuff like that. And so even with the guys from L.A., uh, when they moved, <laughs> I kind of laugh because when they moved it over here from L.A., you know, he, they were telling me, I didn't even know I was a Sudeño. You know, I didn't even know I was a Sudeño until I moved over here. <laughs> you know, because, it, you know, they moved into a neighborhood in the east side and they had an L.A. hat on and stuff and they're just walking around. And some fools, you know, some youngsters jammed them up. Like, where you from? I'm from L.A. What's up, homeboy? And they just start beating shit oh, out of them. He said, <laughs> they're calling them, uh, the, the, the term for today was they call here scraps, right? Scraps, scrapa, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I didn't even know what a scrap was. I was like, they're calling me scrap. I was like, what the fuck's going on? That's why he's beating shit out of him for. And so, <laughs> you know, he, he, he found out the hard way. He said, I didn't even know what, what, what a Sudan was over in L.A. He said, it's this hood, you know. It's 18th Street, Florencia, fucking Mata, fucking well, Rockwood. It's all these different white fences, all these different hoods. But, you know, for his hoods, and when he came up here, he said it was just a totally different, a totally different, you know, gang culture for him. So, but of course, they ended up connecting with the, some of the Sudanos over here. And then, they, you know, from there, they just ran with it, you know. But he, but he said it was different because they're more Chicanoish, 
and like the majority of the Sureños over here, you know, they're majority Mexicanos. Like all the Sureños over here, ninety nine percent of them were primary Spanish speaking. Oh. You know. And so there's very few, I mean, just about every Sureño over here spoke Spanish. The northerners, um it depends what part of town you're from. If you spoke Spanish or not. Like a lot of the West Side hoods, you know, a lot of them spoke Spanish. Not everyone, but a lot of them spoke Spanish. If you're from the East Side, could be a little bit who spoke Spanish. Uh, majority of my homeboys, <laughs> none of us spoke Spanish. Mm-hmm. None of us, my parents spoke Spanish. A lot of our parents spoke Spanish. Mm-hmm. But, but very few of my homeboys that I can think of spoke Spanish. Very few of them mm-hmm. spoke Spanish. And so, hmm. so it was like a, a, a culture thing between being how uh, how do you identify a northerner and a Sureño from over here? You know, it was, it was kind of a, you know, for me, it was like, you know, when I was a kid, when I was doing my thing, that's how we identified, you know, Sureño, because, you know, they were more spoke like, Spanish. they spoke Spanish. Ah. You know, that's how we, did, that's how like, we we used to look at them like, you know, always at the, at the Sureño, at the scrap right there. It's like, nah, it's not. And then we'll, we'll hit them up, you know, if they didn't, you know. And and I felt bad. I feel bad nowadays, I me mean, now, because like a lot of them probably weren't Sureño, but because they spoke Spanish or were accusing them of being scared or lying or, you know, they got beat up, hmm. you know. And maybe after that, they became Sureño. And, as, and, and a lot of kids that I worked with throughout all my years of doing this, they they told me like their experiences, and they told me that that Norteños were racist, you know. And I and I believe a lot of that now. Towards them, towards the Mexicans, been, right? Like towards the, yeah, the motherland yeah. and all that. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, huh. yeah. And, that, and a lot of it was true. I debated it a lot with the with some of my, I still talk to a lot of my homeboys. Mm-hmm. I still involve, you know, a lot of my homeboys, I still talk to, we still kick it, we still hang out, you know, we still do our thing. They know what I do. You know, I don't consider myself a northerner no more. I don't consider myself any of that anymore. Mm-hmm. But, you know, a lot of my homeboys do. <laughs> a lot of my homeboys do, but they know, you know, that I'm not, you know, those are not part of my values. Those are not part of, you know, my beliefs anymore. You know, some of them, you know, they're not all active or doing it, but, you know, it's like being a, a Christian, but not going to church, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you still believe in it. You still carry yourself, you know, that way. But, you know, we debate. We do debate sometimes. But I tell them, you know, these are what the kids tell me. This is what they told me, you know, mm-hmm. that North Bay was a racist. And I remember, mm-hmm. you know, doing that <laughs> because a kid spoke Spanish. Damn. You know. You're guilty. And, <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, a lot you were, of us are guilty yeah. of it. A lot of, and even with some of the old Sureño gangs, they separate themselves by, you know, using the term Mexicanos in their gang. There's Vario Mexicano locals, Vario Toro Mexicanos, hmm. Vario Sureño Mexicanos. So they use, you know, they separate themselves hmm. by, by using that term. Hmm. And the Norteños were Chicanos, and the Sureños were Mexicanos. You know, a lot of the Sureños over here, well, I don't know about this new, newer generation, but a lot of the first generation don't call themselves Chicano. They're Mexicano. Travel. <laughs> Yo. As the time goes by and the earth rotates We gon' fly high up to outer space And we will never fall down I'm one with the universe, call me the sound The bass booming in your speaker With the microphone I possess, it's a heater You better drop it, let go You can't touch my beats or my flow Nigga, Kevin Smith my name But not the director, we ain't the same, man I'm a pimp by nature Inside of me is a God the creator Pursuing my dreams, cause anything is possible, you know what I mean. I wanna live comfortable, but gotta be clean. But working every day from nine to five in my thing. I feel like a trap. Can't get out of the bubble. I'm running out of time. Overload, I'm in trouble. I feel like I'm trapped. 
Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble Trouble, trouble one by one we start to subtract them Separate facade from who really bought that action Feel like I'm trapped in the room without a key Four walls surrounding me, stripping my identity Got me in the bubble to observe and deceive Take away my culture and my nationality Talking about double jeopardy and double standard To killing my folks like it don't even matter And when we gather, disgusted by the charades Bullets spray the crowd, target practice in the game No accountability, so who bears the blame? They wanna see us violent and justify the change Back to how it used to be Obey or you get beat It's a different time You fuck with mine You feel as heat Not a threat It's a promise Real shit Got the music as a platform For awareness I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload I'm in trouble Trouble let me out of this box I'm a claustrophobic robot Who knows not what he does Cause they program my thoughts And they tell me support this And hate that person If I don't then I'm crucified And made to be worthless Does a penny with two holes in it Have a purpose When he smiles They don't really know What's under the surface I'm a product of pain Racism and cocaine I never tooted once But it's all in my veins That shit is all in my genes See, it's my destiny This is nothing new kid I'm just an old recipe A boring story That you've heard hundreds of times Blah 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 Wham 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 Hate my life And my parents both suck I'll never be like them Then you grow up, get married, and end up just like them For the most part, it's our fault we're trapped in this bitch Shit, they gave us the blueprint, our dumbasses ain't I feel missing. like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble Trouble, trouble, trouble Do Norteños have a presence in states outside of California like Sudeños do? You know what? I th yeah, yeah, they do. I don't know if it's as, as big as as big as the Sudeño population, but if you go on YouTube, that's the biggest like like uh that's my biggest uh resource there. Hmm. Like you go on you go on YouTube, if you hit up Upstate Sudeño, you'll see all the the Sudeños from Northern California. And he, he hit up Oregon. You'll see the Sureños and Norteños in Oregon and Washington, Arizona, Colorado. I was even tripping out on that. You know, I was like, damn, you got to move over there too? Mm -hmm. All it takes is for someone to move, or even with this social media nowadays, mm -hmm. it's just, it, it influences. It's like Bloods and Crips. Yeah. Bloods and Crips started in L.A., and now they're, now they're freaking everywhere. Australia. Australia, yeah, fuck, different countries. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everywhere. Everywhere. So it, with the social media nowadays, all it takes is some kid you know, to watch a video, to be influenced by somebody. So I'm going to be a student, you know, even though they don't even know what it means. Yeah. You know, so they're going to do it. You know, I, I want to be a student, you know, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it don't take very much now. It don't take very much now. And that's something that we, you know, that we, we notice with social media. It's, it's a really heavy influential recruiter. Oh, yeah. That's, know, man, it's the biggest one. <laughs> It's the biggest recruiter right now. Yeah, and all you need is like to make a cool ass video on YouTube is just have a, a decent tablet, phone, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> a good beat. And all of a sudden you're With, a crip. You're a famous rapper. Yeah. Takashi six nine <laughs> blood. Oh yeah. Oh man, I can't stand that. Oh, I hate that. I can't. God. He's. I can't. I yeah, man. Even when he when he first came out, I was like, "What was this fucking spaghetti over looking motherfucker?" <laughs> I couldn't. Even, I couldn't. Oh man, that's that's like the worst. Yeah, example. he's getting he's his Mexican. payback. He's getting his payback right now. Yeah, that's the thing. He's Mexican, man, and the yeah, people. and he's fucking Mexican. I found he's Mexican. Mom, why couldn't he be like Dominican or Puerto Rican? <laughs> you know, I was. I didn't even know they had Mexicans in New York. I was like, "What the fuck." Like, what the fuck? I know we're not claiming him. Like, fuck that. We ain't claiming his ass. Yeah, man. <laughs> I ain't claiming his ass. Yeah, he like, he's a snapshot. That. He's a snapshot of what the new generation has become, and and how gang banging has. I mean, because he got big off of that big gang banging where he was. He there was bloods in the in the video, and obviously it came back 
that you know he just was kind of extorted in or whatever was giving them money and whatnot but that's how it became big was promoting the life that you actually lived one day you yeah know, back in the day yeah and he's i mean that's why he turned around so quick yeah easy you know, right he's, he's, yeah he's, you're not gonna he's, laugh he's, yeah a year and a half two years that's it yeah he, he, and he and he flipped so fast yeah. you know because he wasn't i mean he was just used to the money and the fame. He didn't. He didn't understand the consequence behind everything he was doing. Mm-hmm. And he, even with that, the turnover rate with the gangs now is so like, it's so quick. That's why there's so many dropout gangs now. You know, there's like explain I think there's what more a dropout, dropout gang, gang is. Dropout gang so, is. So, so a dropout gang, and every every nationality has one. It doesn't matter if you're Mexican, white, black, Asian. So if you're a northerner or a southerner. They have dropout gangs. I think there's like two fivers. There's there's, there's riders. There's different groups. So if you if you go bad on either one, you you PC up. And for me, like my opinion, just because you fall you, you fall bad, you know. And there's different reasons why people fall off. You know, whatever whatever reason, you still have that gangster mentality in you. And so you still want to continue to be part of something. You still want to. You still have that criminal element in you. You still have that, that, that in you. So these so are PC gonna, gangs, gonna, right? Kind of. Is what yeah, PC gangs. Gotcha. Yeah, they're PC gangs. Gotcha. And so, so they're going to join another group, gotcha. you know, and continue that mentality. Continue to have that little circle of support, and okay. you know, continue to, to do what they're doing, but under a different umbrella, against the the major group, you know. And I, and the thing they join the major group, the the dropout gangs, to kind of like say fuck you. To the uh, to the ones you, they, they fell out of, you know. Gotcha. So, but those are all like that's different politics. Yeah. <laughs> those, are, those are those are different politics. Uh, I, I never even knew that existed. But explain to my audience what PC even means and how someone gets PC'd up. So, so pretty much protected custody is if you're on the main line, it, it could be PC. They got in county jail. They got in a prison, state prison. And so pretty much if you fuck up, oh, I can cuss, right? Yeah, of cuss? course. I cuss? Okay. <laughs> so if you fuck up, <laughs> so if you fuck up in any way, or if you, if you fuck up, you snitch, you do anything that's, and, uh, and that's disapproved by those who are, I guess, who are in charge or who have the lead in, in, in the county jail, whatever, and they don't like it, you know, they'll get you, you know, so that they'll, they'll, they'll either tell you to roll it up or they'll fucking book you or have someone book you or whoop your ass. And so if you know you, a lot of times people know they fucked up. And so before they get got, they'll, they'll roll it up. Mm. You need to get all their shit or go to the guard and say, <laughs> I need help. Get me out of this unit. Get me out of this dorm. Mm. Get me out of this area. And I need, I need protective custody. But a lot of times when they go to protective custody, they got to be brief. So when they be brief, they they got to give up whatever information I mm. you know have on the other side sometimes. Not all the time. I don't think they got to do it all the time. Only if they're validated. But then they got they got to go through that process, and so they got to give information at times too. But what makes it even worse because the people on the main line know they got to you know debrief and give up more information to go on that side as well. For the most part, is someone who gets PC'd up. Is it their choice, or is there ever time where they're, it's mandatory that they they have to do PC? I think sometimes I've heard people do it like a famous rapper or something like that. Like the, even then, they still it's still their choice, or like because sometimes when they're famous rappers, they're, you know they're gonna go in there and they're gonna get fucking taken advantage of, mm-hmm. you know. So they're gonna go over there and fucking have to pay taxes or fucking they're gonna be extorted. So a lot of times, I think you know they know better. <laughs> Ain't no one who's famous gonna go in there, go on the main line, and mm. think people are gonna fucking be all over their dick because they're famous. That's like, no, nah, well, you're gonna fucking pay us. Mm. You want a protection, and not that we're gonna let these fools get you or do whatever. Because but, you know, because I've heard a couple of rappers on interviews actually brag about, you know, going to prison or whatnot, and then or jail or whatever, and then they um they have the choice to either get PC'd up, but they're like, no, nah, I'm walking the main line and they walk the main line and they get respect. So in your opinion, do you think they're, they're shelling out some dough to get that protection? <laughs> fuck yeah. They're talking, <laughs> they're, fuck yeah. They're protecting the rap name. You know, they're talking about all kinds of shit about being in prison and 
oh, I'm a gangster this and gangster that. Then they get locked up and they can't tell no one they PC up. <laughs> Hell no. They're not telling no one they PC up. That's the worst thing. There'll be a piece of shit they do that shit. Mm. You know, because if they're talking about living that type of lifestyle and then they go and PC up, they're portrayed, you know, that's like, you know, you're full of shit. Mm. You know, that's the, that's the one thing. It's like you can't sit here and sing about that and and then go to prison and like, oh, can I get protective custody? Are you gonna sing? Are you gonna rap about that? Oh, when I rolled it up, you know, I PC it up, you know. Hey, that was nice, man. I, you need to make that a song. <laughs> I rolled it up, PC it up. That's what fucking. That's what Six Nights is rap about. There I rolled it up, PC it up. You know? <laughs> so fuck. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's. Okay. Yeah, that's that's. Okay. But that's the, but that's the. To me, I don't know. That that's just a. Uh, but there's a lot of people who I mean. I've had friends who, at our age, now I'm in my 40s, and I, I had a, a friend, he, he was still doing stupid shit out here, and he, he caught a case, and, you know, we, we seen him, or someone, one of our, my old homeboys seen him at court, and he was over here, and when you go to court, PC's brown, right? Uh-huh. And so one of my one of my homeboys seen him at a court, my homeboy went to court for something, it wasn't like a, a bad case, or but he seen him. And he's like, hey, so and so's in brown. I'm like, for real? That fool was in brown? And I was kind of laughing because the way he portrayed himself out here, it was like, and like, you know, like a lot of my homeboys, we still talk to each other, we still kick it, but we don't kick it with the ones who are still trying to do stupid shit. We're all grown ass men now. You know, if you're still, if you're, if you're our age, you're in your 40s, you know, we all got jobs, we got families now, or, you know, we're settled down. But you get you still always have a few who are still out there trying to do stupid shit. And you sound like fool, you can get caught up, stupid ass. And he did, and this, what, what this fool do? He PC'd up. Mm. Like, hey, that's on him. That's on him. You know, he thought he can go in there because the, how can he just say, you know, for for you know, I know, I know. I mean, for I think for both for for Mexican gangs in general for North and South is real strict. <laughs> real strict and if you can't handle it and deal with it you know you're gonna that's not for everybody sometimes mm. and you know and he, he pc it up it's just you and me school is in session baby but i don't play i know you wanted to go uh -huh. to recess but i take, take that, that away, away. What? understand i'm the what? man even if you had a plan if you make two hundred thousand i'm keeping a hundred grand wait a minute uh, because i'm pimping you bitch this is america so why not get rich when you're searching for your music you're playing my station i'm two steps beyond maybe that's the fascination on. one plus one equals two i'm talking you and me you talking me and you when we come together we be feeling absolute we put one in the air and be feeling so cool ooh, ooh. i'm a west coast rapper from the city of the hub everywhere i go i get that california love like i'm the plug they trying to tap into my energy when i hit the spot you know i'm coming with that synergy replenishing like gatorade got they levels up and now we two steps beyond these flames kicking up dust never running from the smoke Hold up. we really want the smoke only from clone god though let's go one plus one equals two i'm talking Talking you and me, you talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. My inner sugar ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm a Gemini, bitch. So you know what that means. It means that sometime one plus one equals three. I'm a wandering star with two grams up in my cigar and a heart with two scars apart. And if I snap, girl, I'm sorry, bitch. Pass me the lighter. I'm about to play street fighter. Hot dude in that pussy, like my name Kenna Ryu. She says she never kissed a girl, but bitch, tonight you experiment. Put this tablet on your tongue and just enjoy the experience one plus one equals two i'm talking you and me you talking me and you when we come together we be feeling absolute we put one in the air and be feeling so cool ooh, ooh. are you familiar with bg knockout the rapper is that a rapper yeah I'm, I'll look him up right now. Okay, BG no, no, it's all good. I'm just curious. No, he, he he said something specific. He made a statement, and I would love to know your your thoughts on it because he he got a lot of slack 
you know, from Latinos. Um, he went on Vlad TV and he said in so many words, I'm going to paraphrase it, but he said in so many words that uh, Mexican gangs are known to snitch on their enemies, you know, to get them in trouble. And it's okay, you know, between the homies and the Mexican gangs, it's, it's, it's seen as okay because you're snitching on the enemy. He got a lot of slack for that. Um, I, I was curious what, what, what your thoughts of that is. Nah, to me, I, I, uh, I mean, a rat's a rat. I've had, I mean, I mean, you know, when my homies got shot and stuff, I mean, you don't sit there and enemy the build. The whole purpose of, of that is you go get your enemy back. You don't point a finger because then you got to go to court and testify against them. You know, that makes you a rat. You know, uh, if you do that, you know, you're no good, regardless of if it's the enemy or not, you know. So to me, I mean, Maybe maybe that's what he's done, or someone he knows has done that. But you know, I know in general Mexican gangs are against that. I think any gang is against that. You know, I don't know. I don't, I've never heard of it. Any gangs being in favor of that because then that's what, I mean. The whole purpose of being a gang is reputation, right? Mm -hmm. Your your sole your sole purpose is having a reputation of being fucking one hundred percent gangster, keeping it solid, no snitching at all. You gotta keep that snitch pointing fingers being in the courtroom, out of everything. So if you do that, you know, the reputation of that gang is, is, it's no good, you know, it's no good. And so if they were, if anybody were to do that, you know, that individual right there would be, would be no good in general. That gang's name would be no good, you know? And so, mm. I, I mean, I mean, I've never heard of anybody doing that. I've had a, my homeboys, Sticks of fools back then, and and you know fools that they've done stick to went and testified against them, you know, and right away they're no good. That would their their whole hood was a week after that, you know, because they weren't testified. I mean, you could have came and got us back. You could have came and shot at us, or you know, do whatever. You know, I even had a five years ago one of my fr friends. He was, he's not even a you know an old an old hood from a, the same area we grew up at. You know, they're kind of an old rivalry. But raw grown ass men, you know, they they jumped him and when he was with his wife and stabbed the shit out of him, hmm. you know, and he didn't say anything. He didn't tell the cops who they were. His wife didn't say nothing, nothing at all. Hmm. You know, we're all grown ass men now, so he, I mean, he he still went by the book. So I ain't gonna say shit. Hmm. You know, he can he he did it. You know, and so it's just even at this age, he just like I ain't gonna say, say shit to those people. You know, I ain't gonna. I just told the cops that I didn't know who they were. And mm. I, that's that's cool because like, I ain't gonna go to court. I ain't gonna fucking take the stand. I'm gonna like, I'll just and I sit, see that motherfucker next time. I'm just gonna whoop his ass. Come on, and that's that's how you you know you get to handle it, you know. But yeah, everyone's different. Mm -hmm. Everyone, everyone's different. I can't speak for on everyone's behalf. I mean, I'm at a that's just my my opinion. Mm. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not even an active individual. You know, that's. Not, I'm against all that. But that that was know, mentality. Yeah, if you were active, yeah, that's definitely a mentality. That, yeah, if I was involved, that's you know, that would be it. Like, yeah, I well, wouldn't. Just... Let me ask you my last question for you. Uh, you've been working with the youth for over 25 years, which I commend. I want to thank you first of all for that. We need more people like that in our community, and I encourage everybody who has a story like joker has to work with these kids because they don't listen to people like me i'm not a gangster i've never been a gangster they listen to you guys you know what i'm saying that have been through this shit so i i definitely applaud you for doing that dog um but let me ask you man amongst all the youth i'm assuming you're you deal with that risk youth in the hood yeah okay yeah, cool yeah. cool um what is <clears throat> what's the most common factor that you see amongst kids you know who are looking to join the street life and and things like that well, a lot of them are just looking for to belong, to be accepted. A lot of them come from, from you know, honestly, a lot of them don't have dads. That's a, a big, you know, common thing. A lot of them don't have dads. A lot of them don't have positive role models. A lot of them are looking to, you know, b belong to something bigger and better, you know. And so that's that's one of the biggest things that we we, mm. we see. A lot of them don't have dad. And even myself, I didn't have my dad growing up, you know, but, yeah. you know, so that's one thing that I, that we see 
you know, and, and if their dad, I mean, I can't say that for all. I mean, there's been a few cases where there was some dads involved and they were, you know, making all their efforts or it can, but, you know, I mean, there's sometimes there's this, you know, sometimes parents just don't know how to connect with their kids and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, and, and maybe someone else does. And it, I mean, there's this one kid we were working with, you know, he, he was, you know, tatted up. He, he had the whole, the whole fit, uh, the, the dress, the walk, the talk, you know, his chin was always up walking down the hallway of this, this little community school we used to work at. You know, he was a, he was a northerner. And then uh, in this one school, it was all northerners. And uh, every time a student came to this school, uh, they, they wouldn't stay. But there was this one kid. <laughs> I like this kid, too. He was one of my favorite kids, a Sudeo kid. He came. He came to that school and beat the shit out of that kid. Right? Mm. It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't need me to laugh about it. But it was just. <laughs> I'm like, I like this kid because he didn't. He didn't intimidated about it. But that kid he beat up. You know, we ended up going to his house, and we, when he gave us his address, me and my partner were like, dude, this is like, we sure we got the right address? Google. This. It was one of the most expensive neighborhoods in, in San Jose. <laughs> or like, we, we thought, like, does he live in a shack? Does he live in the back? Is he running a room? You know, we're just kind of like tripping out. Like, and so we pulled up to the house and it was a really, really nice house. Really nice house. And, you know, met the mom. The parents were from Mexico, but they owned a business. You know, the kid was like 16. So we just asked, you know, just conversation with the parents, like, how long you did trip for? Oh, eight years. And we looked at him. Oh, she's been here since you're eight years old. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought you grew up over here in this neighborhood. Like, oh no, I just kick it there. You know. Mm. And this kid had everything Damn. he ever could want growing up. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, but there was just something missing between him and his family, mm. where he just de- where he decided to go that route, the gangs. And I don't, I don't know if it was that school mm. year or the following school year where he ended up a. Uh, the murder case on a, on a, on a, I don't know if it was on a bus or a light rail train, oh, man. but you know, and then w- w- once he got to the county jail, he went full blown, you know, he went full blown in there. And mm. You just never know. Every, every case is, everyone's situation is different. Mm. You know, you got some, you got some kids we work with where they don't have shit and they're, they strive to do all they can to, to be good and do, and do better. There's some who, you know, mm. who just end up just go- going with the flow and, joining gangs and doing whatever and there's some who have everything mm. but there's just something else missing and then they're fucking around anyway you know so so we've seen it all we've seen it all there's not an answer for everything it's just it's just crazy mm. wow, you know man. to see that sometimes <sighs> dude i i want to once again applaud you and thank you for for the work that you do man um i i was never a, a gang member or anything like that but i did i, w- I was heading in the wrong direction i did a lot of things that you know were, were really bad and and it was people like you who actually reeled me in and and kind of changed my direction so i uh, definitely want to thank you for everything you do um is there anything you want to promote you know um the floor is yours oh man this is i got a, i got a youtube channel <laughs> oh do you no shit oh pl- pl- plug away <laughs> dog you should yeah please do tell everybody where they can find you on youtube it has nothing to do with gangs or anything like that, but it has to do. Uh, I do beer reviews. <laughs> you do what? Beer reviews. Dog, that's dope. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Throw that shit reviews. out there. Give us the name of it, dog. What is it? It's called the Beer King. That's tight, homie. Really, I, I like that shit. I yeah. like doing shit like that. I'm a beer connoisseur, yeah. so I'm gonna have to check that shit out. Oh yeah, I drink craft beer. That's my thing, man. What? Craft beer. Okay, that's kind of tight, dog. I'm gonna check that out. I promise you. What is it again? Yeah. Beer- the, Give it the beer king. The, the beer, beer king. king. All right, cool. I'm yeah, a, I encourage everybody out there to check that out. That's dope, homie. I like. That. Oh yeah, we right here. Yeah. Hit that subscribe button right there. I'm gonna make sure. I f- yeah. Yeah, the beer king. Oh, my, yeah, my my Instagram is more active right now than my than my YouTube channel. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna get I'm, I'm gonna get back onto my YouTube. Yeah, I would suggest but, doing yeah. that, man. Definitely suggest doing that, man. YouTube is is the thing nowadays, dude. Well, Joker, um, it's it's definitely been a pleasure, homeboy. I hope we can do this again in the future, and I, I thank you for your time, man. Oh, thank you for having me on, man. I, I was, I was, it was cool when I heard Gangster Reese. 
And I heard him kind of making a comment about someone making taking a picture at, at Echo Park. I'm like, oh, that fucker's talking about me. Oh, asshole. yeah, that's right. No, <laughs> you, you, you did tell me that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that fucking asshole. But he was right. Echo Park's hella, like, hella changed. I'm like looking for, was it Shy Girl and another one? I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, man. Um, oh, what's the name? Do, Mi Vida just, Loca, right? Is it Mi Vida Loca? Yeah, Mi, yeah. yeah, Mi Vida Loca. That's hilarious. I just see people doing doing yoga and drinking oh, fucking lattes and shit oh yeah it's so I was like yeah la is so gentrified yeah. now homie and i'm sure yeah it's just that, that, that's funny that you mentioned that dog well hey have a good night man i'll definitely stay in touch with you all right all right bro all right, thank boy. you yes for right, sure thank you dog peace man all right all right, peace, all right. for us to recognize that our nations have worked together for security and peace and human dignity around the world in paris the most ambitious agreement in history to fight climate change, a new sustainable development set of goals to end extreme poverty, the American companies health sparking and education. a fierce debate across this country Quality tonight, for all a business in Wisconsin implanting microchips in its employees in the skin of their hands, so what are they tracking and would you say yes if you're not supposed to do the same? Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. I had to rush out of my bed because I was late for work. My motherfucking rent is due and my boss is a jerk. Pencil pushing at the job, an intermediate clerk. My mama told me to go to school. I'm going bananas berserk. I work every day, don't know where the money goes. My girl is big and pregnant, want me to paint her toes. Only a high school diploma. I'm smelling the aroma. The greenery is burning in my room. But life is a mama Sita. She glad to meet ya. She bad coming soon. <laughs> Better get the broom, my nigga. You clean up your house. She got a little more time to back out, cause she ain't your spouse. But do I love her? I need her. Maybe respect how I treat her. But when I see my baby, I'ma wanna go and feed her. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. I was born in a space and time where people were stupid. Everybody looking for love, fucking with Cupid. Who did whatever they wanted to do with black fist up? Stand to opposition, keeping Hennessy in a cup. Drain, nigga, tell me what you think about God. The Bible is written by man, so people. People think of a side Form your own opinion before you listen to white men The system has got you on American bandstand And when you get home, you gotta look in the mirror Take off all the makeup and the wig is more clear I fear a day when I can't smoke my weed I drink my drink, my nigga, you know what I need But success is a motherfucker, shoes to feel I got a baby at home, I need them big time deals This shit just got real, it's going down tonight Somebody Somebody gon' get jacked, hope they don't put up a fight Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat Blow that smoke right out your lungs You go to church every Friday Now you're speaking in tongues You gave up chilling with friends Pastor got a bend Repenting on your knees Confessing all your sins to the end How far will it go? Why you naked, boy? He eating all your candy Tasting your almond joy Troy, I can help you Let me take you to outer space If you're looking for God Meditate to the perfect place Race, we moving at the speed of light Traveling fast through a black hole And in my day a night. I'm trying to fight against the norm, my eyes are open, you see, cause I can only be me, not what you want me to be, classy, nigga born in the 77, daddy named Orlando, my name Kevin, Lucille, my mama, the girl true raised me, Kevin and Delilah, they having a baby, just give me a little bit of peace, steady job and some food to eat, just give me a little bit of peace, steady Job is some food to eat. 
vibe Just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat